Cool. Any questions so far in regards to emotionals and, and what you struggle with or what can I help you with? Like, what, what is something that you might struggle with? Anybody? Go ahead. 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 Okay. Okay. It's sometimes what? Oh, okay, perfect. So uh, let's 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 tackle that real quick. How's the time? Let me check me out. So let's let's start. Let me see. Just because because of, of that, let me see if everybody up. Cool. If everybody else makes sense to this. So they say by some sometimes they don't understand what other people are saying, right? And also that you might feel like they're talking about you, right? So how many? Does this happen to everybody here? How many get upset by what somebody else say? Like if somebody's talking bad about you, does that make you feel some type of way? Yeah. Hey, let me see the hands so I know if I'm talking to the right people. So if somebody's talking about you, it makes you feel some type of way, right? Okay, so I had, I had a, 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 a different type of crowd. Somebody said no, yes. So do, who says yes? Who says yes? How does it make you feel? Quick. Let me see, Greg, but how does it make you feel? Yeah? Salty? That's mad? You? Huh? You don't talk to them anymore? Mixed emotions? You just cut them off. You? Yeah? Mad? You? Just bad, bad. Okay, anybody here raise their hand? You? Go ahead. Unknowing and pitiful, that's a good point, right? You, you know you? Unknowing and? Unknowing and? Angry. Angry, angry. A, a, okay, and then you. You say, how do you make you feel? Doesn't make you feel anything? It doesn't bother you? Okay, cool. Cool, cool. You just don't care. Beautiful. Because we need to get to a point where we don't care, but it's not. So, that, okay, well, here's the difference of being, of, which is good. And, and we probably would not applaud this stuff. Like, yo, this guy doesn't care. That's actually a good thing because he's not letting somebody else distract him. Now, there's something that you could actually do intentionally to manage your emotions. By the way, guys, let me know if this makes sense. Hopefully this grabs. Listen, do you know that the reason you get mad when somebody else is talking bad about you is because you are judging it? Check this out. Because somebody says something bad about you, right, for X or Y reason, you judge them, right? I can't believe they're saying something that's judging. I can't. I, I, how could? They? That's judging. Then it becomes a personal problem, and now you feel some type of way. But in simpler terms, when you don't care, you don't judge that somebody else is saying something about you because, I, I don't know, Let's ask the young man here. Why, why, why don't you care? Just curious. Because um, whatever they say about me is really not true. Because whatever they say about me is really not true. The only reason that I would judge somebody that's talking bad about me is because somewhat inside of me, I feel like what they're saying is true. Right? My, ten, my daughter, when she was 10 years old, she had a little teddy bear, right? And I, and I, and I, look at the, I took the teddy bear away, and I was just checking this out, how it worked, and it's interesting how it works. I took the teddy bear, and I tell her, this teddy bear is really ugly. She was like, what, man? How could you say that? Like, like this teddy bear, this is my favorite teddy bear. How can you say that about my teddy bear? And, 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 and she, was, she felt some type of way. And I said to her, baby, but how do you feel about the teddy bear? Guess what she said? I love my teddy bear. That's, that's, that's my favorite teddy bear, right? And then I said immediately, I said, well, if you love your teddy bear, what does it matter what I think about the teddy bear, right? So then we came up with this thing that says somebody else's opinion doesn't have to be your reality. Somebody else's opinion doesn't have to be my reality. Why? Because as this young man just said, it's not the truth. Right? It's just not the truth. 
So how much, tell me now, somebody's talking bad about you and you don't judge them, number one. Number two, you know, what, and, you, and, you, and there's a way you want to feel and you know who you are and you know that it's not true. How does that make you feel now? Does it bother you? No. Right, it doesn't even bother you. It doesn't even phase you, right? So because it doesn't phase you, that's loose control, right? You tighten your control because it was something external that you have no control over. Somebody says something because, I don't know. You, 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 listen, your mom, your, 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 your parents, they get mad at you for doing something. They, sometimes you say, well, I don't even know what I'm doing wrong. Anybody said that before? Yep. I don't even know what I'm doing wrong. It's funny how it works. I experienced my, I got a four-year-old son, too. He's a trip. He's, I got an Indian looking. I'll show you in a second. This guy. He's, he, anyways. And, bro, this guy gets in trouble, and he don't even know why he gets in trouble. And he, then he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, it's cool, bro. I'm like, apology accepted. And now he goes, again, you're, 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 you're always impacting someone's life. Somebody in the, play, in the playground the other day, he was helping them out, and they said something, or he hit him or something, and they were like... <laughs> They say, I'm so sorry to him. I'm, I'm so sorry. They, 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 oh, sorry. They say, sorry, sorry. And he said, apology accepted. Like, it, I mean, uh, this might be not big for you guys. But it was huge to me to see those type of fruits happening. Because we're not, we're not, I'm not, I am not not getting upset with the person who's talking bad about me. You, she says something very key. She says, mad and pity, Right? Pitiful. Pitiful. What's the meaning of pitiful? Like, like, you know what I mean? Okay, go ahead, man. Let me hear this. <laughs> well, all right, cool. Hey, give me your, your, your answers. You have the word. Well, what is pitiful that for you? Sorry, right? Like, like, like Dito, I call it Dito, like Dito, like they like hurting, right? Almost like they're going through something. I don't know if it goes that far, but pity, a.k.a. caring for other people, that, by the way, that means that you are a caring person. Like, that's one of your natural gifts to the point where you happen to open up your homies. Right? Here's your, that, you're that type of caring. So knowing that, you're going to, like you're gonna help a bunch. Of, you're gonna help a bunch of people. You, that, that's just a gift, natural born gift and ability to serve other people. Once you start grasping how you feel, which is how you want to feel, it's amazing where life starts to hit you because things start to evolve that you didn't even know you were capable of doing. Right? Lose control with uh, speaking. So I tighten my control. I don't let somebody else's opinion become my reality. Now I can focus because I don't have. I'm not in the illusion. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not in the illusion, right? So guess what? Where I am? I'm in, I'm in my best version. I'm in my ABCs. I'm aware. I'm breathing. And I'm making the choice how I want to feel. And because of that, gratefulness starts to show up. And now opportunities to feel how you feel start to show up. Like opportunities for you to open the door for somebody shows up. Opportunity for you to say something that, you, you know, I, I, he might have probably thought it was nothing, but it became a whole thing here. Opportunity for like a word like pity to show up to now help you guys understand that yes, we feel pity because the person that is saying, talking bad about you, the reason they're talking bad about you is because they are going through something. So it's not your place to put them down about, oh, I can't believe you're talking bad about me. We're here to impact someone's life. Let me be then that person of value. Hey, man, I heard you, you, you know, you, you have a question? Like, is there a problem? Like, and then now we're able to communicate, and then you realize that you didn't even, just like, you know, mom, you don't know why you're, you're getting in trouble with your parents. You didn't even know why the person is talking bad about you. And then when you come and ask them, hey, let me ask you a question. I heard you talking bad about me. What's going on? Uh, listen, I, you stepped on my shoes, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, no, no, here you go. I'll give you another one. Your, the, the laces on your shoes hit my shoes. Exactly. That's the whole point. That is the smallest thing that they're mad about you and that you didn't even know you did because you just happened to be walking and your shoe, they were walking past you and when you turn, your shoelaces got loose and they hit their shoes and now they're talking bad about you and you didn't even know that that happened. You understand that? 
So how much more, if I, get, if I understand I'm here to impact someone's life, we understood that, right? I'm here, I, if I get rid of my illusion that, that from both aspects, because I could be the one that they're feeling pity to, because I could be the one that's talking bad about somebody else. But I can't talk about bad about somebody else because somebody else can't bother me. Because they hit me with the thing. That doesn't bother me. It's cool. There you go. Tie my shoes up. Keep it moving. Because they said something. Well, it's not true. I keep it moving. And because I keep it moving, I stay in intentional living, intentional lifestyle. And now I'm able to feel all the amazing things that I feel. So here are three words that, I, that I, I'll finish up with this, guys. These are three words that I like to live by. And number one is intentional. Number two is energetic. And number three is grateful. Intentional, I cannot give nothing that I don't have. Meaning, I intentionally give myself value first. And anybody play video games here? How do you get better at your video game? How do you get better at playing? Practicing? Practicing? Okay. Do you learn from other people? Like, do you go on YouTube and research and, then, yeah. and see? Right? Yeah. Some people do, some people don't. Those that do, you can tell the difference of those that don't, right? Because if you're playing all the time, and then somebody else is playing, but they're also learning, I'm pretty sure that by the end of the week, the person that's learning and playing will know more than the person just playing, right? Make sense? Yeah. Cool. You're putting value in your system, so when the homie comes, it's like, yo, how you did that? Guess what? Because you put information in your system... Oh, man, the reason I did that, look, I learned how to do this, this. I, I'm in Mortal Kombat days. So I learned how to do up, down, up, down, th you know, I, that's, my, that's my error. I, I know how to do all this, and now, you know, finish him, you know, and the thing is happening, right? And, and, I, and now I thought that, and check this out, guys, this is how simple it is. I learned something, right, intentionally learned something that was going to help me in my life, number one, because I learned it, now I was able to teach it to somebody else. So guess what? That creates opportunities for me to impact somebody else's life, right? And because of that, that person says, bro, thank you. That's crazy. I was able to finish him into that crazy fatality. I want to come back. I was able to, ah. And, and now you feel how you want to feel. You feel happy, grateful. You, you know, you feel all these words that you wanted to feel. Does that make sense? Is that simple? Two plus two is how much? Right. So if I impact somebody else's life, that should equal... Right, all these definitions that you have. Ain't it simple? Cool. So the same way that you play the games, there's areas that you might struggle with, and there's books for your stuff. There's kids speaking to you. And if not, you are the person to learn about this stuff and help other kids in your area. So next time, I don't have to come here and do my thing. My this young man could come up here and be like, listen, man, one of the things y'all struggle with is y'all get mad when people say stuff, right? But listen, I don't get mad. You know why? Because... I don't care. You know why? Because it's not true. You know why? So how can you be bullied if it's not true? Right? You can't be offended by somebody else when you know who you are. Right? Make sense? All right, cool, cool. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Anything that y'all struggle with? Like, that was a good one. So we've been on a roll here. That was good stuff. Okay, throw that, throw that curveball. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I knew you. You Spanish? Uh, you, your name said it clearly. My, my son's name is Jeliel. Uh, it's like, yeah, yeah Spanish. Yeah. Go ahead, Ma. Yeah. You got a question? Okay, what's your question? Say, say it louder. Time. He said time. Oh, my God. I, can't hear this guy. I don't even have a watch. I can't even tell you. Go ahead, Ma. Yes. Perfect, you know, awesome. They get around that peer group. Yeah. How do they handle that peer pressure? Yeah. In order to be themselves. Yeah. Still feel like, you know, I'm cool. I'm but cool, but. How do I still fit in with my peer group? So remember the, the, the energy, the frequency that we are like this? Yeah. And, and this is why it's, it takes intentionality. Like, you have to know how you want to feel. You have to know this stuff before you allow somebody else to make you feel a certain way. I remember at your age, eighth grade, when I came here, eighth grade, man, I was, I was a troubled teen, okay? Uh, a very troubled teen. 
uh, eighth grade, be because of cool, I remember the teacher walked in and I had just learned this new hand gesture. And I, I thought I was cool, man. And I did the gesture to the teacher, man, and boom, to the office. I'm like, whoa, like, I didn't even know. But it was all because of peer pressure. And then I, I did, I don't know, I don't, I'm not going to shake. I don't, I don't want to give you guys ideas. But I got stuff that I got suspended for. One kid got a spell for. Like, some, we used to do some, some dumb stuff, man. And that I wish somebody, like, somebody was telling me what I'm telling you guys now. Because the, I'll tell you this one, actually. Someone, it was externally, it didn't have nothing to do with me, man. I ended up almost hurting the kid. I mean, just keep it like that. It, it was, just, it didn't make any sense. But it was because I thought it was my reality. Right? So when it comes to you and your peer pressure, you guys know who you guys are. Why do you let somebody else control you? And if you don't know who you are, again, we're going back to how do you want to feel? Because you have to look at the outcome. Man, if I do this, am I going to get in trouble or if I'm not? Like, it's, it's simple math, guys. Two plus two. Right? I know it's tough. I know it's tough, but you have to understand that you're here to impact someone's life. And by the way, if, now that you're hearing this, you know this stuff. When somebody's acting a fool, you, wh why, why do you think they're acting a fool? Because you might got to know some stuff. We need some attention, right? Everybody knows that. They're lacking attention. So what does that make me do? It makes me feel the pity. She called it pity, but it makes me care for them. Like, man, these people are probably going through something I like. Why? Because I was that kid. So because of my attention, I needed to be the best basketball player. I needed to go in school and get in trouble and be, in that, be the highlight all the time. When I stopped doing this stuff is when I started seeing things in my life just start to, oh, 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 oh. And as my daughter starts to see things, oh, oh. My son, look, look how simple this is. We go to, and I'll leave you guys with, wait, let me finish intentional, energetic, and grateful. Intentional, guys, number one. Number two, if I'm intentional in helping you, Right? Does that make good energy? Right? When she opened up that bag of, of, of Welch thing, right? That creates a good, a good vibe between two parties. Like, man, that, man, that made me feel good. Thank you for helping me, man. Thank you for helping with the homework. Yo, good looking out. With, yo, thank you for that pass, man. I got that. You know, when I used to do my little, back, this is my time, N1 was, was popping. Now you got Baller's Life and you know, all Ball TV. But when I used to do my passes, whoo, and when I, and I go under the leg, whoo. And people would be like, yo, that was crazy. That made me feel good. I had to do that as an intentional, good energy, energetic. And the third one is gratefulness. I feel gratefulness when somebody says, thank you for helping me. When I, when I do it to somebody else, man, thank you for helping me. And because of that, the next thing I get into, because I'm not, I'm not in my head worrying about what they said about me, complaining about what they didn't do or they should have done, I, I, and I get rid of these illusions, and now I'm able to see the next hitting opportunity. And the next place to do something good for somebody else. And that continue to excel. And next thing you know, you'll see some friends who excel in life and you see some who don't. And that's the differentiator of it, man. If there's any more questions, if not, I'm pretty much wrapping up here. Any more any questions? That was a great question. Did that help anyways? Did that help with your, peer, with your peers? And how to control yourself so you don't, you don't let them affect you. And then you get in trouble and they leave like nothing happened. Does that happen to, I, happened to me plenty of times? I got in trouble and I was like, it wasn't even me. But I, because I was in the circle. So, and, and, and by the way, if you don't fit in the circle because it's not aligned to what you, who you are, make your own circle. Back in the days, we used to start this thing called prayer circles in schools. And, and it'll start with two kids, and two kids start praying in the mornings in school, and next thing you know, I come back three months later, and there's 80 kids praying. And then, and then I come back a year later, now, there's, now we're in a conference, you know, this thing is filled up, and we're, and we're over here just helping these people and empowering people. Yeah? That took students to do that. It didn't, take, it didn't take somebody else from outside to do that. Any other questions? That good? I'm good, too, if y'all good. I'll leave you guys for one more. Okay, one more. I just wrote this song the other day. It's called Heartbeat. Hear me out, hear me out. Um, hear me out, hear me out. Well, let me see if I remember while I pull it up. It says, no, I'm not going to remember. I just wrote it, I just wrote it. Okay, yeah, here you go. Every heart has a different pace. Listen up. Everybody has a heart, right? Can you feel your heartbeat right now? Let me, let's try that real quick. Let's take a deep breath. And let me know if you feel your heartbeat real quick. How fast is it going? 
Chill, medium, medium, medium low. Well done. Medium, well slow. Bless you. Mine is kind of good, not good pace and a good rhythm, right? It's almost like, like salsa. Cool. All right, check this out, guys. Let me tell you about your heartbeat real quick. And I'll finish with it and we're done. Every heart has a different pace. Listen up, listen up. Every heart has a different pace, a different emotion, a different beat, a different shape, a long desire to be connected and embraced, to hear the wounds and the brokenness they had to face. If you're listening now, it's because it's still beating. It doesn't deserve to be shamed, punished, or mistreated. It has plans for you, and every day it will repeat it until you stop the battle in your mind and get committed. This ain't the end of you now. It's time to connect with your heart and now with who you're around. Your heart is speaking to you daily. Stop putting it down. The disconnection has to confuse and living with doubt. Even with all the battles, it still survived though. Stop acting like you don't hear it, treating it like your rival. It hates to see you living your life in full survive mode. Its mode is to connect you to God and have revival. I got that? And every time you think you won and you made it. Without having your heart involved, real success you have delayed it. Can you feel your heart beat? That's a song to it. Can you feel your heart beat? Because you can have success all you want, but if your heart wasn't involved, if you were not connected to it, it's really not a success to the real you. Second verse says, there's magic when you surrender. Your heart comes with a direct line from you to sender. He sent you with a purpose and roadmap for you to follow. Your heart is hollow. For some that might be hard to swallow. There's no tomorrow. Just the now for you to follow. Just the now for you to follow. Make the best attempt to connect and avoid the sorrow. I remind you, this is a real life. It's not a game. Many got it confused. It's not about money and fame. It's about connection. It's about connection with higher self and self-reflection. Be aware of your distractions and avoid many deflections. The one thing you control is where you put all your attention. The one thing you control is where you put all your attention. What you focus on will grow. That's a secret I had to mention. Fear comes from the mind. Love comes from the heart. If you feel it and connect it, your life will evolve. You will see your next chapter like a unique piece of art with a desire for fulfillment that will take you real far. Every time you think you won and you made it without having your heart involved with success, you have delayed it. Can you feel your heartbeat? I remember a young girl at eighth grade. I was teaching in her class, and, 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 and she, was a, she was an artist. She was drawing. There was art all over the room, art all over the room, eighth grader. And I said, who drew that art? And she was like, oh, this young lady. And she had an issue with her legs. Like, she would walk funny. Beautiful young lady, beautiful young lady. But she would walk funny. But she, could, she was an artist. And this young lady, I remember telling her, we, oh, we had, we had a prayer circle. We did a prayer circle in the room while I finished talking to her, and we started praying, and she had a vision. And she comes, shares the vision, and she says, man, I saw you with wings and fire around the kids, and you were in the middle with these ring, with, with like diamonds and glowing, and she had this, this vision, right? And I said, the guy revealed to me that was a gift. He's going to give you visions for you to draw these things, and that's, that's your mission, right? And, and guess what? The next week, she came out with the drawing. She drew me in the middle with the kids around her, with the fire around it, and it was a beautiful piece of art, right? And I gifted her, and I gave her some money for it. And I said, look, there's a business being born out of you right now at eighth grade. And next thing you know, she brought me another painting. It was a tunnel with a little person, and she put, if God brings you through it, he, to it he'll bring you through it. And, and, and she even had, she had wrote it wrong, so she kind of like, you know, put the little line in between, and then she wrote it right in the piece. And that was the art. And I bought that one too. And that became an idea, and then we talked to the mom, and then those arts became canvases. So now we one piece of art, we started printing canvases. And at eighth grade, this young lady, because she knew who she was, she was no longer, no longer letting other people determine who she was because she walked funny. She knew who, exactly who she was, and she started capitalizing on this, and she made a business, eighth grade, made a business from her arts. She was feeling her heartbeat. And I'll leave you with the end. It says, it's not even a rap, it's just me talking. I say, connecting to your heart, also known as intuition, must be the first connecting you do with yourself. Give, um, must, must do yourself. Then you'll be able to give yourself the time and permission to connect with God. It's not about what you accomplish or gain in this life. It's about the journey, about being, about who you become daily and what legacy you leave behind. I remember him because he, he was great. I remember him because what legacy you leave behind. 
We are past. How many know God is good, right? I heard that before. God is good, right? We are past getting excited with what God is doing. We are in a time where we make God excited with what we do. Like God is excited with the things that you do and how you help other people already. Eh? So make the best of time and feel your heartbeat. It is speaking to you daily and is giving you the next step to your unique treasure and on how to manage and win the emotional intelligence game. All right? God bless you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um.